legend. A legend. Be real. Yeah. Southgate in the house. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming in, man. We appreciate you. Thanks for having me. So I got a number of things I want to talk to you about. Like, obviously, you're doing this collaboration with LAFC again, and that's awesome, and, and we love it. And our guy Mario here, and no yeah, one, yeah. no one is bigger on the LAFC than this man right you know, here. LAFC. He is, he is blood, sweat, and tears with the LAFC. Cap, so. where you at? If I'm in studio, I'm expecting to see you, my man. I'm not around that often. Where you well, at? I know, and, and you know what happened today, Mario? Um, George and I practiced pickleball earlier today, and then we I did. had to go back to South South LA. You got hurt. No, 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 no. Okay, no. okay, good. Just good, like, good. just like your new hit, the the new joint that you dropped, <laughs> living it up. Yep. Okay, uh -huh. right. I, I got my daughter's first track meet tonight. I can't miss that. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's got to be there. Valid, valid. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, doubt. yeah, for sure, for sure. So I got a lot of stuff I want to talk to you about, but let me start with something that I I didn't realize until we were we were told that you were going to be in here because I was like, oh, let me see what else you know I can dig up on Be Real that I didn't know. Whatever. Obviously, I followed you guys, Cypress Hill. You know, when I was growing up, was like. The group, right? Like we wanted to, we listen to all your music. Sometimes on the down low because yeah. uh, you know mom and pops didn't want us to listen. True, that. Low key. Um, low but, key. <laughs> but but I didn't know that Mellow Man Ace yeah. was an original member of the group. Yeah, I mean, um, it the movement started on Cypress Avenue, which was the street that uh, Send Dog and, and Mellow and their family lived in Southgate. Right, and we sort of all congregated there, you know, on the front porch many a night. Um, and that's where we all hung out and we're, you know, sort of um, trying to get a strategy on on what we were going to do with with our lives in terms of uh, the rap music and stuff like that. Right. And yeah, it all started there. He was he was one of us. He actually was uh, one of the first ones who showed me how to write a song. I was into poetry loosely. And so I would write and he noticed that. And I noticed that uh, he was going in from being a b-boy like breaking and stuff like that yeah. onto the mic now right um because some people transition like that you know sometimes you went from b-boy to you know turntableist or right or you got on the mic or you you know did the graffiti on the wall he went from uh break dancing onto the mic and i went from popping onto the mic okay and, and he sort of uh he you know he showed me how to, the structure of how you write a rap to how to transform a poem into a rap to make it lock on beat. So, you know, he was the first one to actually I, get me in. I mean, listen, if I, I'm going to tell you, I, I had a lot of, I had, I, I definitely bought the single of Mentirosa, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, when I was right. a little kid growing up, because first of all, I'm Cuban. I know you're half Cuban yes. too. So yes, there were not a lot of people like us no. making that, making music period in English. So yeah. the fact that there was anybody, I was drawn to them immediately. And that also led me to you guys. Yeah. He kicked in the door for, you know, a lot of Latinos, him and Kid Frost. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, once we came out, a lot of people didn't even know that Send Dog is, was his older brother. You know what I mean? I did they, not know they, that. They, yeah. did, they didn't know that yeah. for a long time. We just right. we never really talked about the connection. He did his thing. Right. We did ours. And they were, you know, sort of separate styles of hip hop. Sure. Uh, uh, from what, you know, the differences of what he did and what we did. So no one made the connections until, you know, they would see us out somewhere and he was hanging with us or we <laughs> took him on tour with yeah. us. And, and hung out or you know someone dug the information out hey you know this is it true your younger brother is mellow man ace and send dog no, of course yeah. yeah so you know we all had the same dreams you know fortunately you know the, like the hip-hop um seed that was planted within us from run dmc you know right. it was something that we could all see ourselves doing and we did it for fun for a long time until mellow got in the door he got in the door first with uh, delicious vinyl and then eventually Capitol Records. And then we eventually get in through um, Rough House Sony. Um, but yeah, him and DJ Muggs were the first two that got in from our squad. Hey, B, when you, um, can I say B or yeah, should I say Mr. Absolutely. Real? No, he's fine. <laughs> okay. So, so when, when you guys are kids and it's the late 80s and it's the early 90s, you just mentioned Run DMC. Right. And, you know, they had two guys plus Jam Master J. So there were multiple voices. Yeah. Like when you guys were sitting around, who else other than Run DMC were you talking about? And how did you guys think to yourselves, well, we're going to get into that? Well, you know, we listened to all sorts of, of, of hip hop. I mean, from the solo artists to like Big Daddy Kane, Rakim, Cool G Rap, and of course LL Cool J. Um, but we, you know, 
there was there was something special about a group to us. So like guys like um, Run DMC, obviously the Beastie Boys were huge yeah. to us. Mm -hmm. EPMD, Houdini and uh, groups like that. They were huge influence on us. And most importantly, you know, Public Enemy, they were like yeah. huge to us. And, and uh, they were sort of the, you know, like Run DMC was the initial influence, but public enemy was like everything to us and and also you know i have to mention de la soul and rest in peace mm -hmm. dave because yeah. they were big to us too we were like we we heard something that they were doing that was different than anybody else in terms of what the east coast hip-hop sound was was putting out and uh you know that that's sort of where we got our role from you know everything had to be distinct and have a sound so you know from those groups i mentioned you know they all had a sound when it came on you knew exactly who it was and you know from there that's how we developed our our sound we're like we got to have our own sound. oh immediately yeah. the whenever whatever record came on like you knew it was you guys for sure <laughs> every we, single we time tried there it is right there tried to make it that way <laughs> yeah you know? no but you know what though but you hear i do i hear influence from run dmc yeah, right from beastie boys yeah. Yeah. you know i i that's why i was so curious to hear they were you know, what you were going to say about that. Yeah, they were huge to us, you know, and uh, fortunately, we got to collaborate with the Beastie Boys at some point. They asked us to be on a remix um, uh, to So What You Want. And that was like big for us because we were the biggest Beastie Boy fans. And uh, we unfortunately, we never got to collaborate with Run DMC or nothing like that. But I mean, they were always someone that they were always a group that we looked at as the pioneers if it wasn't for them none of us are able to get in the way we got in in terms of success and in terms of people being open to hip-hop because they opened it up yeah, really, yeah you know it existed before them and groups were on the radio and and getting radio play and, and some notoriety but they they blasted the doors open so and like the first thing that I ever heard that flipped me you know because I, I was a metal fan in the beginning I, I mean i listened to everything growing up in la you know i had brother a lot of brothers and sisters and they all listened to different stuff you know like krla with the old school right uh, the doo-wop you know yeah old, you know old soul old funk and all that stuff and my mother was into the the salsa music yeah she came from cuba and all that stuff and so the fair share of Celia Cruz, yeah. Gran Cambo, and, and 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 all them, and uh, she liked also like the Beatles and what we consider classic rock now. Yeah, and my father he liked the doo wop stuff and 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 things like that. So I grew up to a lot of different things, but the main thing that I was listening to when I was hanging out with my cousins or friends, I was listening to metal. You know, like Ozzy, what Ozzy Osbourne, Blacks, uh, uh, before Black, before I knew what Black Sabbath was. Yeah, because this is when he's already doing his solo stuff. Uh, Rush, ACDC, ACDC in the eighties, yeah, um, man, yeah, all that Van Halen. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to all that, and, yeah. And uh, now Van Halen, I'm gonna ask you a question because this is a debate we have all the time. Yes, David Lee Roth David or Lee Sammy Roth. Hagar? David Lee Roth. That that's my man. See, now I'll say this: that's not to say that. No, it's not to say that Sammy Hagar was bad. Yeah, he wasn't bad. No, he was good. Because they they sold more records under Hagar. Right. It's just the vibe. Yeah was different see cappy yeah, i know but be real what happened to me was i went to see um <laughs> david lee roth when he got reunited with van halen oh yeah and, oh, and, it wasn't and, good. and he forgot the words to panama <laughs> and started screaming at everybody on stage and he's like you guys should be lucky i even remember these words it's been 20 years i'm like david lee bro hey. first of all it's just panama that's number one <laughs> secondly you look like barry manilow all of a sudden what happened you are not wrong there and you know what he was pulling the same deal back when he when he was in his 20s because back then he was, he was partying too hard yeah, to yeah. remember the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a chance to see them when they came to um, when it was Staples Center. Yeah, um, they you know they they threw the first reunion tour there where Wolfgang was playing. Yep, bass. I yeah, I saw that, and that yep. was a pretty good show. I was, I was pleasantly surprised that he could sing <laughs> the notes yeah. um, close because yeah. I you know we've we've heard some of the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> out there yeah. and it was like whoa yeah yeah <laughs> but now now let me ask you for you guys all right you know you guys are on the scene right uh insane in the brain is blowing up right it's getting all the radio play everyone's hearing it kids are loving it parents probably not so much but kids are loving it but that's when you know you got something when the kids love it and the parents don't right that's generally the way of music that is okay what is the first 
big moment in your brain with you guys, no pun intended, where you're like, oh, we have we have arrived. Um, <laughs> as funny as this is going to sound, um, before anybody knew who we were, right, you know, there was a go to mall we would go to. It was Montebello Town Center. Right. <laughs> <laughs> who knows why? Yeah. But we go there. Yeah. No one knew who the hell we were back then. You right. know, <laughs> so, from one from one year to the next after insane is out there and now it's blown up. Right. We try to go back to that mall and, you know, we're not even thinking like we're just we're we're not it's where you always went. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we get in there and a swell of people start coming at us like, oh, my God, it's Cypress Hill here. And we end up getting kicked out of the mall because, you know, we're causing a commotion. There's like 300 people trying to get autographs and, you know, like going crazy for us. And that's something we had never experienced. And and that's when I knew I'm like, oh, it's different now. Yeah. You just know? just a great idea just came to me right now. <laughs> Be real. You know what we should do? We should get you to perform a number at the Mandy's 2 this upcoming year, which is our big award show. Oh, boy. So we here's the deal. We do an award show to celebrate ourselves, which is kind of like, well, it's no different than Hollywood in a lot of ways. I guess right. it's yeah. the way we look. But we decided to do it ourselves, too. And it actually was a surprising success. Like, we didn't know what the hell we were getting into. <laughs> it and was then a success because you guys won all the trophies. That's why. <laughs> well, our <laughs> show did win a lot of them. Our show did win a lot of them. But it's because we get because we have... People like you, who are uh, friends of the show, bringing people like Be Real to the right, show. Right. What's wrong with celebrating yourself? Yeah. No, right. no, I'm with you. I'm with you. But I think it's funny that we do that. But it's, you're right. There's no. But come on, George. Here. What an idea, right? To have Be Real like perform a number yeah, at the Mandy's. I, I feel like no, and, and I'm not. I don't want to see. This is the thing about you'll learn about Cap. He loves to impose himself on everyone and then make you Im and impose on you in this right. scenario. So now, be real. It would be great if you did that, but we don't understand if you've got other things going on. When no, are the come Mandy's? on, man. Yeah. Dude, dude well, last year it was in Montebello. Are you kidding? It was, it was in Montebello. We did it at QC. Yeah. Oh, my QC. God. We did it at QC. <laughs> I quite can't. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still yeah. Like, I might, I might have. I might We're going to Commerce this time. We're going to the casino there in Commerce. Right. My, we'll send my, a car for you, dude. My aunt used to work there back in the day. <laughs> my aunt used, one of my aunts used to work there back in the day. At QC? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, QC no, was- No, no, no. At the, oh, at, the, at the Commerce Casino. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, so anyway, we can we can get your- uh, We'll send out your invite. How about that? Right on. We'll, that we'll works. That, we'll, that we'll, works. We'll send that an invite for you. Um, so, right. You go to the mall. And then when you guys start like all of a sudden getting like recognized, not not locally anymore, but now all of a sudden you're getting the national fame, right? The writing about you, like the Rolling Stones, this, that, and the other, like you're changing the game in a lot of ways um, in regards to the way music is being produced and, and being put out there. Like at what point did you guys get people that you started to maybe mentor a little bit or people that were coming up to you say, hey, you were the influence for me. Who were those people? Ah, uh, wow. Um one of them that I remember specifically, most specifically, was Method Man. Oh, wow. Yeah, I ran into him at a club in New York before, like, they came on. And uh, he stopped me and, and said something to that effect. Like, hey, man, you influenced us and, and this, that, and the other. And I, I st sat there chopping it up with him. And we sort of lost track of time. I didn't know who he was at the time yet, you know. Apparently, they were just coming up. Right. And... Uh, you know, years later, he was like, hey, man, I don't know if you remember this, but we were at the tunnel and which was a, a like one of the legendary hip hop clubs in New York. And, you know, I stopped you. I didn't think you were going to stop. I thought you were going to keep on going. And we ended up having a conversation. I thought that was everything. And, you know, I, I was like, all right, man, cool. You know, like because Chuck D did the same thing for me at a club here once, you know, growing up in L.A., a lot of us from certain places, we don't approach celebrities because we know sometimes they could be very much not pleasant. Yeah. And we might have to beat somebody up. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to beat up Chuck D. <laughs> right. And and so, you know, we were always very hesitant to approach. We'd be like admire from far. But this was Chuck D. Right. And he didn't have his hat on and he didn't have the S1W's and Flav wasn't around. He was totally by himself. And we rolled up on him and we're like, hey, Chuck, man, we love you guys. We love what you do, man. And we just wanted to come over and say what's up and, you know, just keep killing it. And, you know, we're we're doing our thing. Hopefully one day we'll be up there with you. And he was like, hey, man, you keep doing what you're doing, you know, put the work in. And maybe one day you will be, you know, doing 
what we do, man. And thank you for the love. And I always thought that was cool. So, you know, from that point on, I told one of my boys, man, that Chuck is one of the coolest mofos ever. If right. I ever get on, that's how I'm going to be with my people. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's cool. I, I carried that torch. And it was funny is it, um, I, we had years later, fast forward to, let's just say when we did, um, Smoke and Grooves tour and Public Enemy and Cypress Hill are on this tour together. Yeah. For the first time we're touring with them. Um, and we had, um, what is known now as a meet and greet booth. But back then we, we would just go and sign autographs, be with our fans, do the pictures and, and all that for nothing. This was just us like yeah. finding a way to connect Paying with back our fans. to your yeah. grassroots, by yeah, the Yeah, they didn't have to buy nothing. Right, right. We were just there, you know, shaking hands, taking pictures. And no other bands were doing this um, backstage or or out there in the crowd because we put we put our, our booth out in the crowd. Right. And uh, we had no security. We just went out there and we invited Chuck. Right. Like, hey, Chuck, if you want to come out and be with the fans. And he goes, what, what are you guys doing? I'm like, well, you know, we're just sitting. We're just spending time with the fans before we go on stage. He goes, really? So we bring him to the booth. And, you know, he sees a line of like two, three hundred kids. And he goes, like, wow, you guys are doing this. What made you think of this? I said, <laughs> it was the five minutes you gave me wow, cool. at the penthouse lounge in yeah. L.A. And then he proceeds to tell me, hey, look. An older artist told me the five minutes you give your fans is something they remember forever, whether it's a positive moment or a negative moment. And it's that five minutes you give. And that the five minute rule has always been with me. And I passed that on to Beth. Yeah. And so, you know, that's that's the most notable one that that I could remember is when Method Man told me because it came all the way from Chuck. Right. And who knows where he got it from? He yeah. never told me. But, yeah. you know, that that's I. I stay with that because our fans build us up. They're everything. So we got to be able to spend that time with them. That's cool, man. That is really cool. That is super cool. All right. So can I ask the question, which, you know, Mario's in, uh, the LAFC is getting ready to kick off, right? So how did this all happen? How did you get involved with the organization? Um, I mean, they knew I was a fan, I guess. And, uh, the, the problem was I was never able to go to games because we were always on, out on tour. Right. And, you know, with the way that everything had played out in those last couple of years, we, we didn't really have any touring plans because, you know, things were still not fully back yet. Right. But when the games came, you know, we, we, we had open schedules and, you know, they asked me to come down to a camp, a game after they asked me for a song they asked me if i would do a song for them and i was like oh hell yeah yeah team la let's go yeah mm -hmm. and so dj flick sent me the track and he had kid ink on it and it was an easy snap and the, the beat to me was was tight there kid it is ink, right there yeah. yes kid ink killed it so i was like you know what this is an easy plug-in and i love the team i was born and raised here in la so it's it's easy let's go and so once once i did the song they started inviting me to the games and like, Hey, would you want to come see the game? And the first game I went to, I, 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 I sat there, um, you know, on in the front row or what, what do they it's call like celebrity it? Row. Yeah, yeah. Celebrity yeah, row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right down the pitch. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I was right there by the pitch and, and, um, I was like, wow, this is awesome because I seen the whole stadium is just filled. It's with, crazy. It's crazy. And, 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 and I underestimated that because I hadn't been to any of the games. Right you know this was my first one and seeing it filled to the rim and then the most eye-opening part is the 3252 the supporter section, section is yes. insane too was the yeah. most insane section like i've been to, to to every sports game here played in los angeles yeah. all of them right yep. there was no vibe quite like that one yep and so i said the next game i come to i want to go up there yeah and so they took me up there and the drum, the 3252 drum line allowed me to play drums with them. Oh, nice. Because I played percussions. Right. And uh, when I finished, I was like, they won the game. Yeah. Right. We we're like, yeah, we we're feeling the vibe because yeah. we were creating the vibe with the, with the drums and all that stuff. And then they kill it. They, they, in every game I came to after that, I played drums and I brought in our, one of our, my, my bandmates from Cypress Hill, Eric Bobo, who is our drummer and percussion player brought him up there and we became a part of the 3252 section 
they embraced us with open arms and that's where we watch the game we don't even watch we're drumming yeah nice. with them we're watching and drumming i should say right and well soccer allows for that you can yes. you can keep an eye on that yes. while still doing your thing it's yeah. the most yeah. awesome vibe man yeah. you know getting to support the team and be there and and help create the vibe um what do you it, got? Like one snare? You got three tom toms? What kind of drums are we talking? <laughs> I mean, it's it's a row of you know like kick drums, a, a row of snares, a yeah. row of toms, and stuff like that. It's a pretty pretty robust section of of percussions. Um, it it, it gets pretty loud too, man. Oh I, yeah, I remember the first time I went up there. I didn't have my um my ear my ear pieces, yeah. and my ear was ringing for like a month after <laughs> yeah. that. I was like, no way, next time. <laughs> bring it by a yeah. but to, a day. to your point it, it is one of the best atmospheres oh, yeah. i've been to like to your point like i i i grew up in miami you know but yeah. i i've lived here for seven years now and i've been to all of them okay yeah. and I, i've been every single arena every single venue and that place i've been there only a couple of times but mm -hmm. it is always live every single time you're in that building listen I, you know i'm a lifelong lakers fan and I've I, I went to the championship games with with Kobe and Shaq right. and with uh, Kobe and Gasol and, and Odom and all them. And it was buck, you know, it was crazy, yeah. you know, in those championship games. But it was in those championship games only where you see this kind of crazy energy. Right. Where it's every game. Yeah. LAFC, that section. Yeah. It's like it's a championship game. Yeah. There's a lot of pride, a lot of passion. And I mean, you know, if you're from LA, you, you gotta love that. It reminds me of the way that the black hole was when it with was with the Raiders, yeah. Old school. Raiders. Hey, um, yeah. be real, just real quick. Um, you just used a word that I've not ever heard before, and I will definitely use it, but I just want to make sure I use it properly. So he has how many you have four children, one in high school, three in college. So he yeah. tries to he tries to pick up the language that okay. they So I screwed up. So I yeah. screwed up today and yeah. I said high key. And he meant low key. But I meant low key. Yeah, right. Low key. Okay. Yeah. So you just used a word buck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I, I it sounds lit. <laughs> it sounds dope AF. But tell me how to use buck properly, please. You know, that's like if someone's like getting getting wild, like yeah. getting crazy yeah. or, or on one. You know what I mean? Okay. Like it, it, it's the short terminology for the old school term yeah. buck wild. Yeah, there, I, you I, there you go. I, I, there you go. I, See, did right, you buck. understand that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I got it. Okay. I will be we using that buck immediately. Wild up in <laughs> immediately I will be incorporating that high key. So so that we're not so that we're not played out. We just say buck now. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Just shorten it up. Just shorten cool. it up. Happy uh, on the Mandy stages game. Buck wild. Yeah. Oh, there, there you go. go. There you oh, go. I'm going there buck. Go. There you go. We just go buck. <laughs> now, we just played the, the song too. So, But there's a new version. It's a revamped version yes, of this, this song for the LAFC. Revamped version yeah. for our Latino peoples out there. Yeah. I flipped the version hey. in Spanish, um, yeah. which, which was cool. I mean, you know, yeah. I didn't expect that. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, we, <laughs> there's a lot of us out here yeah, in for LA. Sure. Yeah. So why not? You know, and, uh, I, a lot of people ask me to do more Spanish, um, songs and stuff like that. So it, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's, it's kind of a feeling, uh, a want of some of our fans and at the same time you know it's it's flexing a skill that i have that yeah. i don't flex enough yeah. i guess yeah um but yeah it, it's fun it's challenging because i mean it's it's um english is my first language i was born yeah. here my mother was born in cuba and my father in mexico but i was born here yeah. so but I always you know they always spoke spanish to me so yep. i understood it and could speak back. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was in my teens where I would actually had enough confidence to speak Spanish, you know, in front of people. I mean, teens is crazy it's because crazy. I'm, I'm a grown ass man. And even More? now, like, I mean, I, I, it wasn't until honestly, I was much older than that where I yeah. felt like confident where I could have a real conversation with people. For I, sure. I still have that hang up like yeah. if i have a couple of drinks i could totally have the conversation <laughs> yeah for sure because <laughs> yeah. i'm not caring how yeah. i how i sound but, <laughs> but when i'm like this yeah. oh man i'd be having yeah. anxieties if i say it am yeah. i gonna say it right this you don't want to say it right because i mean my my mom or my grandma would be like es un disparate you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like you just be like you're talking nonsense you know yeah. so i feel you i get it i dos mio yeah, there yeah you go. exactly that's there you go uh be real LAFC is coming soon. The new joint is out. Pl Laura, we have it here. There we go. My dude, thank you so much. You are a legend, um, not only in the music industry, but to this community. And we thank you so much for just being in the studio and hanging out with us for a few minutes. Hey, man. thank you for the invite. And if I am in town, I will run through the Mandy's and, you know, 
get buck. Splash a song yeah, and, yeah, get right, and get buck. And get buck. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I hear a collab with Bad Bunny coming in oh. Espanol. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, B Real. Appreciate you. Right on. Go LAFC. Season right. opener. Lakers. This Saturday yes, season sir. opener. This Saturday season opener. Uh, all right. Coming up next. What do we got next, Lindsay?